Hopefully you can see that both. Yeah. All right, usual disclaimer at the front. We I do send you a copy of the presentation afterwards and you will get a copy of the video, um, both for, so helpful for future reference, hopefully. Um, so, and I hope that you guys are all set to do interactive stuff. Okay, just don't hesitate to break in if you if I miss out something or it doesn't make sense. So what we're going to cover is what on earth public maps are, uh, why do I find them appealing, and hopefully your, you and your users will, uh, and then how we go about creating them, adding features, editing it, and then uh, it's your turn. <clears throat> so a public map is simply a tool that enables you to put what you've got in Parish Online up on a website where the users can interact with it. So they can zoom in, they can scroll, they can uh, click on attributes, they can turn layers on and off, just the same as if they were actually in Parish Online. Um, and to, to me, one of the most appealing parts of the public map is this bit, that every time you make a change within that particular um, layer, then it automatically updates on the, on the public map. You don't need to do anything. So it's the public map is constantly up to date with whatever you've just put in uh, to Parish Online yourself or anybody else who's contributing data. So I was just testing this before I came here and it was messy. So I think I might just come out of here and um, go into a more direct way of doing it. So the first map I was going to show you was, we're gonna get there, are we? Yes, that's better. Um, here. So this is one that we use for our planning applications um, and letting people see it. And it takes a little while to load up, but what you, because we're using aerial photography, but basically what you start with is that, which doesn't make a lot of sense until people start scrolling in. Now bear in mind, we are actually now just looking at a browsable part of um, the, the website. So as you scroll in, the details become apparent, things pop up, there's way too much data there. So you can go into the layers and say 2019 is, or 2021 was too busy. Let's see if 2022 is less busy, that's much better. So now we can say, let's focus on that bit. You notice I can scroll around and I can zoom in. And as you get closer and closer into the detail, so more and more of the planning apps uh, show up and, and you can see this particular person is being particularly uh, busy this year and this is all one area that different applications for all sorts of parts of the area uh, but then if we decide that we want to see what happened last year you can turn off that layer and turn on that one and you'll see he was equally busy last year but as we zoom back out so were lots of other people uh, the whole thing is color coded the same way as it is within Parish Online. So if you have a red one, it means it was refused in accordance with the legend here. And you can also click on the attribute. So you click on it, it brings up what you would bet in Parish Online. And in particular for users, there's a link here to the local planning authority website so they can see all the documents and everything, just as if they were themselves using planning online. So this is why I really like public maps. So that was one example. Let's just uh, close that one down and give you another just as a contrast. So <clears throat> here's an example of using the uh, um, Parish Online to demonstrate things that were not otherwise immediately obvious. Now I'm gonna turn on the public rights of way here. What you're looking at now is the area of Somerset on which Hinkley Point nuclear power station is being built. There are the two old ones, one of which is shut down, the other is about to be shut down, and the two new ones being built. And there's going to be a massive two or three year gap in between the shutting down, the second one and the restart or the start of the third. So we're going to have major issues on the national grid because Hinkley Point represents something like seven or eight percent of are total generating power. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's a massive site. It has 5,000 workers on it. Uh, and inevitably, the local village suffers from traffic, from huge lorries bundling through buses, taking workers to and from, and all the rest of it. And they wanted to do something like helping out the local community to say sorry. 
And they said, how would it be if we just took one of your local footpaths here? We notice it's muddy and dirty. Uh, why don't we just improve it? We'll upgrade it. We'll tarmac it. And then mums can drive along with their prams. Children can roller skate and rollerblade. And adults can go through on bicycles. And that seemed like an absolutely wonderful idea until the parish clerk said, hang on a minute. What about Ramsar? And everyone said, so what about Ramsar? He said, well, look, turn on the Ramsar layer. And all of a sudden, this footpath you're uh, intending to work on is now subject to all sorts of restrictions and considerations. And if you don't think that was enough, let's think about sites of special scientific interest. And wham, again, you're right in the middle of major issues. And so he went on and on and on, showing all the problems that this particular footpath would, inter, uh, would create. And the solution was very simple. They just chose one that wasn't in any of these areas. Um, but nobody would have realized just by looking at a regular map that there were all these associated issues that had not even come into their considerations until someone used a public map of Parish Online to demonstrate all this to them. So that was another example. I thought I'd give you one more just to show you um, different ways. This was not what it was going to be. <laughs> Here is uh, our own uh, website. And I'm just showing you that uh, we've got the planning applications built into it. So now you're seeing it actually live within a website. And again, you're watching for the whole thing to download because there's a lot of data pouring in because of photography. But there it is. And now, again, people can just scroll around, move it, do whatever they want uh, and click on attributes and up the data will pop. So that's within the website. And then one last example, which I thought was neat, just give you ideas. Um, again, Stagursi, who's a pretty lively bunch of people. Their planning app use a different approach. No photography, so it instantly loads up. And they just use dots to indicate where the uh, planning applications are, which makes it a lot neater and easier to see. On the other hand, the previous approach that we use uh, shows you the outline of the entire area that's going to be involved in the planning application. So two ways of looking at the same thing. Arguably, you could do both. You could just have them as separate layers, one layer of dots and one layer of uh, polygons and people can choose whichever they like. So I just offer it to you as different ways of doing the same thing. Let's go back into the presentation. Um, so those we've done. How do you go about creating a public map? Well, it's not immediately obvious because you've got to go to the cogwheel, click on administration and then select public maps. Then it's simply a matter of selecting the layers that you wish to be involved in the public map. You need to hide content that you don't want to share. And then you can just add the automatically generated code to your website. It really is as simple as that. So let's go ahead and do that. So first step, oops, sorry. That's good. There we go. First step, click on the cogwheel, get the little mini uh, menu down and click on administration. That takes us to this page, which I captured before I allow any of these layers to fill up, to get in your way, to confuse you. Just so that we can highlight what we're going to be doing is clicking on public maps. So you click on public maps, it comes up with any that you've already created and to get a new one, just click on your plus icon. All same as usual. This is where things get much more um, simplified. I think. I think this is one of the better moves that Parish Online have done. What they've done now is they're going to lead you through a trail of these steps. And each step is just a matter of selecting and clicking and off you go. Um, and so it's very straightforward, but you also get a sort of a pro progression map here. You can see exactly where you've got to in your efforts. So I, I think this is a very neat little uh, facility, this. So here on page one, we're just going to select what sort of map are you working with? And you just either click on one button or the other. Um, I've clicked here on the middle one, which is why it's got a green surround, but that's how you see which one you've selected. So we're selecting just to go with regular mapping, but you get the choice of photography or uh, even more simple basic stuff. So click on next. And it comes up and says, which of my layers do you want to be involved in this particular map? So you get all the list of your layers here. 
and you select the ones you want by clicking on the little arrow and it pops up into the left hand side, sorry, the right hand side. If you decide that you didn't want this one after all, you just click on it again and it bounces back to that side. So when you've got all the ones you want, click on next. Now you're going to select third party layers. So you've got everything that Parish Online offers you um, that you can select. And I've just said, look, we'll put in inch woodland and the built up area boundary, but you can select anything you like. And if you didn't like these, you can just deselect them. So when you're ready, it then says we're now in the start location. That's in the sort of progress map up here. And the point of this is, what is the first thing that people see when they walk into the public map? And it needs to be something that they're going to recognize. So either at a scale of the village that they know or something that's easily recognizable so that they can get themselves oriented. I mean, they're going to be able to scroll around to wherever they want to go or zoom in or out wherever they want to go, but they need to know where they are to start with. So what you're choosing here is what's going to first greet people when they click on the public map. Um, so make your choices accordingly. And again, you just move around here with Zoom and everything else until you've got it uh, the way you think that people are going to best understand it. Click on next. And we're now at the bit where we're just doing the configuration. Uh, you must have a title for the map. This is not something that the public's going to see, but if you don't have a title on it, you can't find it again in the future. It doesn't appear in your list of layers. So put a, a title in here, anything you like. In the left-hand side, it defaults to these um, three options, but you can turn these on or off as you wish. So you have, do you want the users to be able to trigger layers on or off? Do you want them to be able to click and get attributes? Um, and do you want them to be able to do a postcode search? And the system defaults to yes to all three of those, but it turns off the address-based search, basically. Um, and that's an option for you to turn on or off. Similarly, over here, you can select which layers you want to show up when people first go in. So again, um, you may feel that you're better off just having just one layer of planning applications and leave out the ancient woodland in this. You can just toggle these on or off. And it's a matter of, again, of what you think is going to best suit the users. Uh, a good argument is to keep it simple, don't have too many layers showing up when you first turn it on, but give them the option to turn on or off the layers as they wish. If you don't like the layers that you see here, then you just click on the back arrow and go back and, and redo your selection. If you're happy, click on save. So now you're on the last page of the uh, public map sort of section and this is where it will have popped your new one down at the bottom of the list remember parish online always adds details to the bottom of your existing list so it may you may need to scroll down to find your new one um, there is a preview button here you can click which will show you what everyone's going to see uh, i personally prefer just clicking on the shared map icon open up a new browse tab and you can see it in all of its glory it's just a bit larger than the preview the preview is fine um, here it's going to tell you which layers you've selected uh, you have to recognize my layers these three and the third party layers the premium stack and these two down the bottom you can have nothing to do with those but the reason you want to be sure about these three is because um, you're going to need to say whether attributes within those should all be visible or not. And we'll get into that on the next slide. Just the last item on here is for those of us who are not coders, um, all you need to do is to click and paste on this and you can either send it to your website manager or if you've got a little bit of knowledge yourself, and it is very, very simple and straightforward, uh, you can just paste this yourself into the website and away you go. Um, or you could, if you have no website designer or, or anyone available, you could just opt to put a link in on the website. That's often easier for many people. Um, but you're better off doing the embedding code, but it's all done for you. Um, and this is known as the embed code is known as iframe. So just send it to your designer in an email or embed it yourself. All right, next slide. 
In Parish Online, if you do what's called info clicking, you bring up information on any, any feature. And some of that information may be private in terms of phone numbers or email addresses, or it may be very personal insofar as this is a lousy payer in terms of his allotments um, each year. You know, you've got to chase him and chase him and chase him. So that sort of note, you don't want to appear on the public map. So by default, the system turns off all those attributes. So you've got to specifically turn on the ones that you do want people to see. Um, and that's why I suggested you make a note of the my layers you're using, because you're going to have to go into each of those layers to turn on the attributes. And we'll show you how you do that here. So I've now you're still in the administration part of your web, uh, sorry, your parish online. I'm going to select my layers rather than the public maps that we were in so that I can adjust my layers. So I'm selecting my layers. And it's come up with the layers I've got. And I've selected applications 2021. And we're going to click on columns over here, which will show you all the columns in use in this particular layer. So here we are. And by default, all the public attributes are turned off. So these are the various attributes in the system, you know, the name, the number, and all that sort of stuff. Which ones do you want? So I, for our system, I turn on all of them, but you might want to be a little bit wary about notes, because if you put in something there like, you know, we really despise this guy, or he's a real troublemaker, <laughs> it probably isn't popular to put that on the public. So think carefully about which these layers, or sorry, rows, columns, attributes, you want to go onto the public map. Uh, so I'll go on to the next slide and you can see that I've turned on everything. And then you just click on save uh, this particular layer and remember to make changes to any of the other layers that you selected to be in my layers on the public map. And amazingly, that's it. Very straightforward, uh, piece of cake. Some ideas or thoughts. Um, there is the ability to change the size of the uh, page that arrives uh, on the village website or whichever website you're going to use. Uh, the detail on how to do that is in the knowledge base, and I've given you a link to click on here that takes you there. There are two videos within the knowledge base articles on public maps, which I think are, are first class, so I just mentioned them here. I need to put brackets around that, don't I? Um, also, if you happen to be using your websites that are based on Squarespace or Wix, then there are particular instructions for how you put the data, the, the um, embedded code into there. Very helpful. Um, for instance, we produce all of our websites on Wix, so uh, very handy. Um, if you want to edit your public map, it's been up there for a while and people are saying, why can't we have this? Wouldn't it be nice if we had that? Then you go back to your administration page, you select the public map by clicking on it, click on the pencil icon, and then you just run through exactly those same steps we've just been through, uh, making the changes where desired. If there are no changes, you just click on next and move on to the next screen. So that's straightforward for editing a map. And if you are tired of a map and you want to get rid of it, then again, same system, you're on the administration page, you select the map, and then you click on the dustbin and you're done. Okay, now it's your turn. Um, I'm assuming that you would both like to have a go at this. Yeah. Um, so assuming you've got your parish online on your machine, please feel free to just go through the public map step by step and do your own thing. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that I can watch the puzzled frowns cross your faces whilst I drink coffee and sit back and relax. But there's a big hint, you, the way to get started, remember, click on your cogwheel in the top right corner, select the administration from the mini menu and go into public maps and then pass for a new one. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and just leave it all to you. Let me know how you get on.
know, I've created a simple one, Graham, just for our city centre cycle racks. Perfect. Um, well, what I'm going to do is ask you then to, uh, this is one of those things I carefully didn't tell you at the start, and they're going to ask you to share your screen and show me <laughs> so that we can look. And whilst you're doing that, um, I have uh, not a challenge or anything else, just a comment which I found fascinating. I've been talking to or going through lessons with um, a parish clerk, actually in Seven Oaks, and she's so fast at what she does that each step I'm pointing out on the presentation as we go through, she's actually doing it in her copy of Parish Online at the other end. And when I get down to the interactive bit and said, okay, it's over to you, she says, I've done it. <laughs> Quite extraordinary. It's just it's nice to know there are people out there who are beginning to get quite familiar. Okay, did um, I didn't stop sharing? I beg your pardon, Peter. And there you go. Okay. Right. That wrong screen. No, that's it. That's good. That the one. Yep. So if you make a copy of the shared URL, just click on the icon to the right. So, yep, go down, go down, but to your right, to your right, to your right there, that one. Click on that, mm -hmm. open up a new browser tab in your browser. Uh, so maybe you're, you're using Edge by the look of it down the bottom, just click on your Edge icon at the bottom of the screen. Not working? Um, yeah, it should be. Is that, can you see it? Not yet. Let's... Well, for whatever reason, that's not working. Um, maybe we can just keep it simple. Let's invite you to click on the preview tab instead up at the top. And there you are. Whoa, boy, you've been busy. Okay, so you might want to exactly scroll in a bit to make it more clear. Those are all the bicycle racks you've got? Yep. Wow. So yeah. are they, these are just where public people can put their own racks rather than this is not where you can go and sort of rent a cycle? No, no, this is just where um, people can park their bikes. Just shows the number of the racks in the group. I'm very impressed. Wow, Chichester is a lot more advanced than when recognised. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a university there, of course. I do, yes, yes. So right. that would make more bike racks more more feasible, right? That's that's absolutely true, Luke. Yes, well done. <laughs> Very good. Well, that obviously, Peter, you've got the hang of this. Um, Luke, did I see you frowning in trouble? Yeah, you did. You did see me looking puzzled. Um, do you, do you I'm, I'm fine with creating a, a a public map. I'm just. I'm rather puzzled by what the other administrator or the administrator, I should call her, oh, has, um, done. Right. has actually done. Um, you, so you want to um, have a go at sharing, sharing that? Yeah. yeah Maybe we can ask Peter if you could stop sharing. Okay, okay. bear with me. want to get back on that screen, the stop sharing screen. Uh, I think maybe escape is a good thing to hit. Or. Um, Usually, there you go. There you go. Okay, good. There you go. Right now, as for me, share screen, and I'm going to share um, this. Can you all see my screen? Absolutely. Yep. Fantastic. So, what I want to achieve here is a tremendously basic objective. Yep. Um, what we've got here, the outline you see in blue, although it doesn't seem to be loading. Um, yep. I don't well, know why got, the issue you've got is you've got the mask at the bottom. And then if you go down to the bottom row in the center, there's that green thing. If yes, if you yeah. turn the mask off, toggle it off, and okay. just do, do a recycle of the a refresh of the screen, yeah, up there. Because the system occasionally gets itself lost. Okay. There you go. All right, that's much better. So what I what I wanted to a very basic application, like I say, I, the the blue sort of diamond shape you can see there represents the parish boundary. Correct. And what I wanted to do is just literally share the parish boundary with the public, 
because it's a new council, it's a new parish, um, and therefore most people will not have a clue where the boundaries begin and end. That's so, that's sweet. Okay, that's good. So um, obviously, I go to the cog wheel. I go to. Oh, sorry, we're in the way of. Yeah, that. I go to administration. Um, let's move that back again. I go. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. You go across to public maps on the left. Yeah. Public maps, of course, and then plus to to add a public map. Right. Uh, I'd like to select aerial imagery. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's, it really is not so easy to show up the parish boundary on a photograph. Okay. It's just because that blue doesn't show up so well if you've got green trees and dark spaces and so forth. Got it. Um, so, so just for the moment, for this stage, let's try it in... Well, I, I go for the middle one. <laughs> <laughs> trying to pre it. It never works, does it? Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Okay, so you're on, detail on mapping. Next. Yep. Next. And then it's giving me available layers. Yes. And obviously, now you want everything. Just leave it as I, it is. There, okay. you, there's nothing new. You don't want anything there. Okay. So move on to the next. Now, from here, you absolutely you must select one. Yeah. And what you want is what's called boundaries administrative. So go down to boundaries administrative. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not there. That's interesting. Okay, man, yeah, I wonder why that is. Yeah, so so do I. I mean, I'm not the primary user of this platform, um, but I, I want to become more of a user of this platform. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised that it's not. Let me just check on mine. One second. Why can't we see that? So if I go into Parish Online, bear with me a second. No, of course. It may be it'll show up on the map anyway, but you've got to select a layer somewhere yeah. along the lines. So I've got my boundaries turned on, they're administrative, and that's a third party layer. So you really ought to be able to get into that. So we're going to do what you've done, just move the photographs. Okay. <clears throat> maps, have a new one, detail maps, next. There's no boundaries there at all in the personal stuff, no, which is what we'd expect. So move on to the third party layers. How come we don't get any boundaries? Unless they're called something else. There's county, I wonder what county does. That's not much use to you. But it might be something that just shows us. When it comes to a parish, maybe it comes on the parish, they just want to make it difficult. No, 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 no. They've got parish there. They've got parish. So let's turn on parish and see what that does. I'm going to turn on county. All right, I'm going back to you now. Okay. Parish yeah. and next. Yep. And this the is my... Start location. Yeah, so this is the... The, the thing that people would recognize, right? Absolutely, yes, that's fine. Next. Um, okay, and now I want to zoom in to no, find no, that well, parish. Uh, this is the starting point, just, right. I think that's, people recognize that, I would just go with that. Okay, yeah, next. got it. So give it a title, um, you're just showing new parish boundary or something, yeah, exactly. And click on save. And click on preview. Do you get what you want? Yay! Look at that. Yes, there it is. All right. So fantastic. Job done. Thank you. And my pleasure. It's always so wonderful when it does work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's interesting. I, I'm glad that you you did that because I had not myself worked out where to find the parish boundary, but it's under parish and not under boundaries administrative, which is how it appears in the layers. So that's very helpful. Thank you. No, no. Well, thank you. Um, okay. Gentlemen, we're, I'm at your disposal for any other questions or anything else. It doesn't have to be on public maps. Uh, Peter, if you don't mind, I've got a question I'd like to ask. Yeah, sure. Um, about layers really i'd i'd like to start 
um, creating the layers that I I think are relevant for for the public and and for the for the um, sure for the growth of the council. Well, let's um, go ahead and start to manage yeah. more land. If you click on your little global icon at the top, the one in the middle, of those three. Yep. Go back to the maps. There you are. This is just taking you back to the starting point. Okay. <clears throat> you might want to get rid of that column on the right hand side. See the X at the top right? Yeah, just get exactly. There you are. Okay. So, so you're in parish layers, absolutely. Now that's what's being created so far. I see. If you want to create a new layer, then you go up to the menu at the top called create. Okay. And a new layer. New layer. Um, Just call will, it whatever you like. Peter's okay. test for the moment, or I, I will call it Luke Test Three if I can. Okay. <laughs> um, Luke Test Three, you gardens, because I've got an idea. All right. Good. And there's a question of whether you you don't want it to be in the asset register, which is where land comes at the bottom. So just ignore those suggestions. Neither just are very helpful to you. Say just next. next. Yeah. And then there's a question of geometry. Are you going to use points, lines, or polygons? And it sounds like you want to do polygons if it's a U garden. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's let's do polygon. Yeah. Right. This uh, where you're doing a layer description is just to remind you in two years' time what the hell you were thinking about. Okay. Because um, you gardens may not trigger a, a, a thought in somebody else's of head. Of course. You uh, gardens. That's really good. Okay, like that. Next. So each um, record that you put into the system, each feature needs to have some attributes. And the, the usual attribute is a name. Like it's got to have a name. So click on the plus sign at the top right. Up comes name. And if you want a name, then just do that. If you want some other attribute, and in the gardens, I don't know, you may want status, you may want uh, names of the contractors, whatever. What do you put into the... Um, why don't we... You don't have to have anything at this stage if you don't want it. But usually you have a name or we have to have something there to refer to it. Um, so I'm just doing this for test purposes, really. So um, I could just call it... Um, I'm generally blank. Well, Peter, the, uh, sorry, Luke, these column titles here are not the actual data you're going to put in, it's the type of data. So you, the, the first one was name, and you're, you're bound to want a name of some sort. How do you identify it? I mean, you can call it ID, you can call it location, whatever you want, but you need something yeah. there. Okay. So okay. Just leave it at the blank, the original name. I would, yeah, okay, location is fine. Okay, and one is, is good, so just go with that for today's purposes. So now you've created the layer. Um, you can see it, there it is, loop test three. Yep. So right click on that and you're gonna add a feature. <clears throat> okay, so the question, it comes up and says, so where do you want to, what do you want to call it, this thing? Okay. The left-hand column location, you need to put something in there. Okay. Um, so whatever is going to identify this for you, um, you could call it you gardens. That's fine. Yeah. Gardens. Okay. Uh, you gardens definitely. Defined boundary. You gardens defined. Let's call okay. it that. Okay, good. Now you'll notice down the bottom, you cannot. Sorry. Oh, I'm there. I pressed return. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, go back into your parish layers. Yep. Yeah, right click on that one. Uh, just yep, go to that feature. Yeah, just do you you do your U gardens definition again or define boundaries, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah, you cannot click on save yet because you haven't actually put anything on the map. Got it. So the next step is to go into the map and, and work out where you're going to put this U gardens. Okay. Uh, and then 
Is that it there to the left? I'm just... If I click on here, is it going to drop a dot? Uh, no, it's going to be the start of the boundary because you're, you're doing a polygon, right? Right, so okay. Where are you going to... Do you know roughly where you Gardens is going to be? Yeah, I do. I know yeah, well, exactly, but I'm just trying to... Okay, well, no just, rush. Just, just trying to around. identify it. Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, I've got it. Good. So the, the way the system works is that when you first click with your mouse, that will be one corner of the, the boundary. Okay. So you want to get into a Q Gardens, sorry, U Gardens is going to be, and, and just click on one spot. And then as you move the mouse, the line will follow it. And then when okay. you want to change direction, click again once and change direction. Uh, I think you click twice. I clicked so, twice. I'm sorry. No, 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 no problem. That means you can now save it. So just go ahead and save on the click on the save button. Now the system assumes you will want to add another record. Now in this case you don't. So kill the feature editor on the left hand side. Just click on the X. Yep. Now, ooh, what happened to your red line? Yeah, it's gone. Interesting. So if you so try again. Yeah. Well, we should be, yes. I'll just, just start the process again. Yeah. This is, this is what I'm here to so this time, do. Yes. So, so, so do your line, one, one click and draw. Yes, one click and change direction. There you go. One click, you can be very approximate. This is just, you're doing rough and ready, that's all. Click again. Yep. And up to the top. Yep. And then double click, double click, double click. Good. Okay. Now save it. Okay. Kill the. Yeah, that's better. Good. Now click on the X to get rid of the feature editor, and click in the dot itself in the area, the red. What you're going to do is now is and click on U Gardens to the left. So now we're in the record. If you click on the pencil. That gives you the chance to edit the boundaries much more tightly if you want to. I see. All you do is just move, yes, just move it to where you want it. And if you, what I tend to do to people here is say, zoom in to get a really nice large scale because then it's oh. a piece of, piece of cake to start pulling the boundaries where you want them. See how much yeah, easier that... it is now? And then just pull them into shape. Okay, got it. So, yes, you want to bring that one. There you go. And it becomes, you know, a curve is, is just a lot of short lines. Basically. Yeah. I got it. And, and this is this is actually of no use, but um, in terms of what I'm creating now, but I could I would spend time refining this were it an actual um, Absolutely. layer yeah. that I that I wanted. But so that's... when you finish making your changes, make sure you remember to click on save. So it, it shaves those changes you've made. There you go. And then every time you turn on that layer, that garden will now show up. Fantastic. So that was quick and easy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Um, not sure I made it look easy, but... Well, <laughs> the, Luke, the beauty of Parish Online is that you can always go back and edit things later. So if you decide that you need to record more than just the location for you gardens, you can go back into the system and add new fields uh, to enable you to capture the data you want to. And if you okay. decide that the shape changes or if someone says, actually, we can only do half of this, this year because of budgetary purposes, then you just adjust the shape accordingly. It. So it's very easy to edit things once you put them in. Um, so I'm a great fan of doing things rough and ready to start with, because once it's there, it, it becomes such simpler to edit and change later. Yeah. As long as yeah. you've got something in the system, it's very easy to adjust it to what Fantastic. it should be later on. Thank you. Okay. Peter, have you got any questions today? Um, yeah, just about the columns that um, are visible in the public map layers, because um, I've created one for our allotment band. Right. But, uh, I didn't want to include purchase price and all this kind of thing. Exactly. So turn those columns off in the public column. Yeah. But 
still showing on the public map when I copy this, uh, when I copy the URL and then put it into the um, browser, it's still showing, although there's no information in there, it's still showing those column headings. Um, will you want the people to be able to select different layers? Not really, no. No, so turn off that option in the public map setup. So by all means, share your screen, Peter. Uh, but go back into your public map itself. Go along to the configuration page. So you just click next, next, next until you arrive at the config page. Yeah, can you? Yep, yep, we're there. So select the layer, whichever one it was. Yeah, which was allotment land. Okay, click on edit. The little pencil at the top, yep. Right, just click on... Blimey, where are you? Oh, you're not quite where I thought you could. Oh, you were in layers, not in um, public maps. I beg your pardon. So if you cancel out of there, my mistake, you want to be in public maps, now click on the... Oh, you haven't done it in allotments. Ooh, with a public map. That's, that's why we have an issue. You don't have a public map of the allotments at the moment, do you? Or is that that one, the one you've chosen? It's, uh, yeah, the one that it I've is that one. Okay, so go through next, and you get to know where you're back in. Yeah, just click on next. Click on next. Click on next. And click on next. Right, see where it says layer control on yeah. the left? Toggle that off. Okay. Right. Now people cannot um, go into where they don't want, or even layer query, you can toggle that off as well. So now uh, yeah, click on your save. Okay. And now if you click on that, it should not show anything. Either we can go into the your browser or we can do it through the preview. <clears throat> so now nobody can do anything. They can't see anything. Yeah. Okay. So if I go on to the browser, um, let's see. Oh, we're back now at the main screen. So you stop sharing basically. There we go. Right. So click on then nothing sort of comes up then because um i wouldn't mind them being able to see just the basic details about it like the name of the site how many plots are on there and uh, any sort of notes in that okay box. so let's let's go into the edit again mm -hmm. and again the same old business of cycling through yep until you get to that configuration page Right, so turn on layer control, turn on layer query, mm -hmm. um, and then save it. But now let's go into the layers. So my layer, mm -hmm. go into allotments, whatever it is. Is yeah. that the one that we're using? Did you, is that the one we're still using for allotment land? Okay. Yes, yeah. All right, so go into the columns. So, the only one, I'm just moving your picture on my screen. So the only ones you've got public at the moment are the ID and the description and the other information. Yeah. Is, is the other information the one that you didn't want them to see? No, it was use, purchase, price, and insured value. Okay. So you got them turned off. Just yep. scroll down. There's nothing else down below we're missing, is there? No. Okay. Okay. So save on that. Uh, how do you save? That one. Yep. Oh, that might be what I... Yes, you didn't make the change last time. Okay. Yeah. So public maps. Good. So go back into there. And you can either do your preview or you, if you can get into your browser. Yeah. What sort of machine are you on a regular... Are you on a Windows PC? Uh, yeah, Windows laptop. You poor, poor person. Um, <laughs> what happens if you alt-tab, Peter? Alt tab. Yeah, so press down the alt key and leaving it held down, then just press the tab key. It should take you to other options. It doesn't? No, it doesn't do a thing. 
Can you see my browser? No. Uh, I can't see your browser. No, I can see the option down the, the bottom for it. And you've got edge clicked, or rather showing as red. What happens if you click on that? It doesn't take you to it? Uh, so way down at the bottom, yes, if you click on that edge, no, it doesn't. Isn't that weird? Um, what happens if you do control T? Share and then all. No, uh, you've come out of sharing now. Yeah. If you, if you do the control T, does it take you into the browser? Well, there you go. You should be seeing it now. Can you see the? Yes. So yeah. if you open up a new tab at the top on the plus sign, mm -hmm. oh, that is, I'm sorry, we are looking at the, the uh, bigger, you're already there, aren't you? Yeah. So now if you click on one of those allotments. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's all I wanted to see. Good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Now it was a matter of the saving, wasn't it? That was the issue. Yeah. So it's just on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked okay. as you expected, but you had to save it first. Good. Lovely. Gentlemen, I'm at your disposal. Um, if you wish to ask more questions, um, or if Peter, if you want to carry on with something else, and Luke has other questions. Yes. Yeah, or you're very welcome to stay, whichever you wish. Yeah. No, that's um, all my queries answered. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to take a tiny bit more of your time, Graham, if I may. Sure. Um, I'd like to, this probably won't be so interesting for you, Peter, but um, you're welcome to, to stay and watch me fumble around. Um, I'd like to actually go ahead and take the step of publishing that boundary map right. on our website. Yeah. Um, and we use WordPress. Right. So I'm imagining that um, embedding the code on there is going to be fairly straightforward. I've, I've built much of the site myself. Oh, yes. So, so um, but I just wanted, if possible, to walk through that process um, to to get that achieved while we're on this call. Sure. Uh, Would that be possible? Absolutely. Bearing in mind, however, that I am not a WordPress person, but we should be able to work out what to no, do. I, what yeah, do. I, no, yeah. Share, share your screen, by all I means. I kind please. of am, so I should be okay. Good. Okay. Um, he said. So have you actually gone so far as to copy the embed code? No, not yet. So, okay. So um, let's go I'll back. What i first is share my screen. Yeah. Why is it not giving me that option? Right, there we go. Okay, you should be able to see the U Gardens boundary yep, there. Absolutely. I'll go back to, um, how do we go home? Just click on there. No. <laughs> no, click on the X, that's right. Okay. And what you want to do is to go up to your administration, the cogwheel. Yep, there you go. That's it. And public go maps. Your public maps. Parish boundary. Yes. Now click on the right hand end of that embed code. See the little icon at the right? Yeah. The pages yeah. icon. Just click on that. Okay. We've copied the URL. Yep. Now uh, bear with me a second. Yep. You want to open up your WordPress? Yeah. Um, it's probably going to be a new tab, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 the Zoom element keeps coming down every time I hover up there. Um, okay. Okay, good. So I can go to um, which page is this going to be on? Okay, it's going to be on yep. it's going to be on maps. All right. Um, now I should be able to. It, it's maps is set up as a gallery at the moment. Right. So. Mm. I'm just looking at the. I, I see it's set up as a gallery at the moment because the only maps that we have are literally scans of documents. So does the gallery shows each one in turn or all of them at once? All of them at once, as you can see. Right. Um, Not ideal in any way. Um, but I'm quite happy to, to start a new process to, to publish the, the parish online maps. But perhaps is there some way I could uh, maybe add media? No. 
Well, yeah. no, I don't think. Um, do you ever, when you're working in WordPress, do you ever get into any of the code? Do you ever see any of the code? Not really. See where it says text on the right there. What happens if you click on text? Nothing. Okay. I wonder if. Um, oh no! Forget that. No. Hey, look, what just, I'll do is. On, whoa! I'm just looking there. Um, hang on a second. I'm just. I form. So where it says. Sorry, can you just scroll down on the right hand side, please, Luke? Yeah, sorry, I've got our little images there. Oh, yes. Um, oh, there's not much there. Okay. So, Graham, in all honesty, I think what I can do here, as I've created the, the boundary map in Parish Online, let me speak to my WordPress admin, as it were, um, and work out the best solution for A, adding that, and B, getting rid of those paper maps and, and doing that those in parish online as well okay what well, i might suggest luke is you email him that um iframe coding yeah and just say uh, here's what i've generated is this usable for you and in that case could you show me how you use it yeah yeah I'll and then go from now. there because he will recognize it instantly yeah and i'm very sorry i just don't know my way no around. no no that's, that's that's completely okay um so that's that's everything from me. That's been really useful, though. Thank you. OK, well, all you need now is to add two or three hours to each of your working days so you can go ahead and practice on this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to certainly try and do that now. <laughs> so, well, good luck. Uh, all right, thank you very much, Graham. Be here, you know, Peter, lovely to see you again. And, and you. Uh, I'll thank follow you up with help, the... You know, I'll be seeing welcome. you Friday morning, I believe. Friday. Yeah. Oh right, of course you are. Yeah. Yes. Okay. For punishment. <laughs> okay. Well, nice to make your acquaintance, Peter. And you, Luke, and all the best. All right. Take Thanks care, very bro. much. Take bye -bye. care, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.